The Me Too movement became a global phenomenon in October 2017, after journalists from the New York Times and New Yorker magazine published a bombshell expose of Hollywood's best kept and worst kept secret. It accused movie mogul Harvey Weinstein of sexual assault and other crimes over a period of at least 30 years. After more than a month long trial, Weinstein has been found guilty of rape and faces jail time in New York. He's also awaiting a second criminal trial in Los Angeles. I sat down with Rowena Chu, she was Weinstein's former assistant, to talk about her experience with him and what she's learned. Harvey Weinstein has been found guilty of rape in the New York case. He's facing another criminal case in Los Angeles and he's going to jail. Mm -hmm. How does this make you feel? I felt at once um, awe and deep respect for the six women that took the stand. And not just the six women that took the stand, but the other almost a hundred other women that have come out and spoken against Harvey. But also the network of journalists and lawyers and politicians and publicists that have really kept the Me Too movement in the public eye. Uh, many of us were bracing for an acquittal and we never thought we'd see Harvey led away in handcuffs. Um, and I also feel a deep failure in the legal system to really speak out on behalf of women. Only 2% of rape cases are convicted. Even though we got a conviction, it was a partial conviction. Let's take a step back. You worked at Weinstein's company Miramax as an assistant to him. So uh, when I came to work for Harvey, I was 24, and so I was pretty young, and it was my second job in the film industry. And it is a very intense, aggressive environment. You know, I'm not particularly alluding to sexual assault necessarily, but there, are, um, you know, there's, Harvey was hard to work for. And you're a minority. I think that played directly, really, into the sexual assault. Um, certainly Harvey alluded a great deal to my race and ethnicity. He would make comments such as, um, you know, I like Chinese girls because they're discreet and they know how to keep secrets. And then in the hotel room as he was assaulting me, he would say, I've never had a Chinese girl before. So there's an element of sexual fetishization about my race. So describe to me that moment in the hotel room at the Venice Film Festival. Well, of course, the experience itself was utterly terrifying. Uh, I mean, I'm much smaller than he is. So, um, you know, the experience of being held down to a bed was incredibly unpleasant. Um, and you just feel, you feel sheer terror. And I, you know, I understand the women who say they froze or they, that their heads went to another place because you feel such a level of terror that you almost feel it's an out-of-body experience. But at the time, I was making desperate appeals to leave. And even if I, as I was being pinned down to the bed, I, I tried to make excuses to roll off the bed and to leave. And on that second night, I did get to leave. You know, he, he was frustrated, but he said, OK, fine, we'll pick this up another evening. What was it like living with that secret? I attempted to commit suicide twice in Hong Kong, so it obviously had a great emotional and mental weight. But the long-term effects of keeping silent about something like a sexual assault, especially so suffocatingly as we were asked to do, we couldn't speak to friends, we couldn't speak to family, we weren't permitted to mention that time in our lives ever again. And of course, we were also locked out from seeking any professional assistance. We couldn't speak to a doctor, we couldn't speak to a therapist. What made you decide it was finally time to break your silence? It took time to come to terms with a story that was internal within me, to resolve emotional conflict, to talk to my husband, to talk to my parents, to talk to my sister. And then, in terms of the Me Too movement, um, I met with at Gwyneth Paltrow's house in January of 2019 with her and another, and Ashley Judd, and several other Harvey survivors. And that was a milestone moment for me in terms of meeting other survivors and telling my story for the first time. And then a couple of months after that, I also testified anonymously at the House of Commons in the UK. And so in May, I spoke to Jodie Cantor and I agreed to be part of the book. Is this a win for the Me Too movement? even if Harvey had been acquitted, it would have been the end of the Me Too movement because so many women now have come out not only just against Harvey, but also revealing other predators in American public life. And so a number of you know, high profile cases around Harvey, Bill Cosby, Roger Ailes, Matt Laura, Kevin Spacey, you know, the list goes on. And these are just men in a public arena. I think the Me Too movement has also prompted a lot of private reckoning. 